known to be one of the deadliest wars in recent memory. The Ethio-Eritrean War took place between May 1998 and June 2000. The war would take the lives of more than 100,000 people and devastate both nations. But the Eritrean government's impunity to international laws and norms on the conduct of war would make the consequences for civilians even more horrifying. But one event would be more memorable than others. In June of 1998, an Eritrean fighter jet would drop cluster bombs on an elementary school in Ma'ala, Tigray's capital taking the lives of 60 innocent civilians, 14 of which were children, and injuring 168. Zafu Hashan worked at Aider Elementary School for 26 years until her retirement in 2018. Even 24 years later, Zafu remembers that day vividly. She had left the school on her way home, but right before she even turned her first corner, a deafening sound would stop her straight. <laughs> I was a third grade teacher when the Eritrean government bombarded the school. I remember, it was a Friday. We were preparing for the 8th grade regional exams. We finished our classes early and stayed behind to help clean the compound along with the students. We finished at around 5. Some went home, while others stayed behind to play. I live near the school, so I left the compound and started walking home. When, even before I could turn a corner, I heard a very loud sound. The sky above the school had turned into dust. We all run back. We found our students' shoes, their clothing, and books covered in blood. But the horror would not end there for Zafu. Minutes after the bombardment, when neighbors and health professionals had gathered to lend a helping hand, the Eritrean fighter jet would strike again, killing scores more. <laughs> We called an ambulance. They were picking up the children and taking them away. The police kept telling us to clear the area. They told us to leave because the jet may come back again. But people didn't listen. People were looking to see if their family members were alive. The jet had come back to the school and dropped another bomb. There were people who came to help. People who came to look for their family members. The second bomb killed residents and family members of students. Zafu lost four students from her third grade class that day. She walked into the classroom at faithful afternoon to find the bodies of her students on the doorsteps of their classroom, the room covered in blood and their bodies torn to pieces. She says what she witnessed on that day still haunts her. <laughs> Aksumait Gebraslase, a third grader, Burtukan Alamayo and Abadit, they were students in my class. We found their bodies in front of the classroom, covered in blood, their bags and their books torn into pieces and burnt. Their bodies too were burnt and torn. It was difficult to identify them. After the incident, I became ill. I spent three months in a church near my house. I couldn't forget what I saw. The blood, the children's clothes, their books. Gebrus Lassi Tafara is the father of one of the victims from Zafu's class, Aksumait Gebrus Lassi. He says the most difficult part is knowing that justice may never be served for the death of his nine-year-old daughter. Aksumait Gebrus Lassi was a child and a Aksumut was nine years old. She was in third grade. I didn't only lost my daughter, but so many were mourning and many more injured. My other daughter, Seblo, was in seventh grade. She was 13 at that time. Till this day, justice has not been served. I don't want to be compensated or anything, but perpetrators must be held accountable for their actions. Political analyst Marasat Sahaya says what unfolded that June afternoon is just one incident of many that demonstrates Isaias's complete disregard for human rights. Either incident was simply, un it was a conti continuation of targeting the non-military establishments there. Even he targeted the uh, uh, Addis Pharmacy, Nadigrat, and other uh, non-military bases. The reason was that I, have, I will strike all uh, military and non-military bases. Simply, these are simply the property of my enemy. That is PLF. That's why uh, it was targeting the students in a school. But it was for Isaias Aforke. It's uh, it is not a big deal to deal with international laws on the humanitarian or moral values. The Eritrean government has throughout the years 
continued its wrath of terror in the horn not only has he turned eritrea into one of the most repressive states in the world but has also gone to war with all of eritrea's neighbors and funded terrorist groups like al shabaab in 2020 isaias would invade tigray with his troops committing some of the most gruesome atrocities of the conflict but many must ask when and if he will be held accountable for his crimes and when the many innocent victims of his aggression will be served justice